All right, so in this video, let's talk about some product function and also how we can use it in a creative way to basically create a conditional summing function that will work with a different spreadsheet. So let's start with some product and how it works and what it does. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a new tab here and just to do a quick example about how some product works. So for example, if you had an invoice that had some information here. So if you had an invoice like this and you wanted to get the total for this, one way to get the total for this when you had prices and you had quantities would be to go here and create a new column and basically just get quantity and multiply it by the price. And then we could drag it down to get the total for each line. And then we could just sum all of this up by adding those numbers together to get the total for this. Now, another way to get to the same total is to use sum product function. So if I do equal sum product, and here in sum product, it accepts a race. So what it does, it will basically give you a column or row. In this case, I'm doing a column then comma, then we have another column and we close parentheses, hit enter. And that should give us the same total as we have here. So basically what it does, it does this row by row multiplication between these two ranges or arrays. And then after it does the multiplication, it will sum it all up and get us the total right here. To simplify this, if you had different arrays of numbers, and you could have two or more, there is really no limit. You could use some product to take those arrays of numbers and do row by row multiplication and then do the sum of all of that. So you could do three, four arrays, however many you need. The only thing here is that this size of the array needs to match the size of the second array because it needs to do this row by row multiplication. And if there's not enough numbers, it's not gonna be able to multiply. Now, if you do three or you do four, what's gonna happen, it's gonna do multiplication again. So it's gonna take this five, multiplied by three, multiplied by this three, and then it's gonna go to the next row, multiply all the numbers together. And then after it does the multiplication, it's gonna do the sum again and get you the total. So just to verify that that's the same as this 117, let's just do it over here. So I'm gonna take this, multiplied by this, multiplied by this, and then I'm gonna drag that down, and then we'll sum it all up. And you should be able to see we get to the same total over here. So that's pretty much how some product works. It's not really that complicated. So now let's go to the sales data worksheet. And let's talk about how we can use this function in a creative way to accomplish conditional summing. So for example, let's say we're trying to get total sales for Olivia. To do that, we need to basically only take sales amounts that match Olivia in the C column, right? So let's first start by doing a logical statement over here. So I'm gonna do an equal sign and I'm gonna check if this equals to Olivia. And this is not Olivia, so we get a false. Now if I drag this formula down, and I'm gonna do this much for now, that's good enough. So you'll see that we get trues anytime this says Olivia, and we get a false every time it's not. Now what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna go to this column to the right, and I'm gonna take the sales amount over here, and I'm gonna multiply that by this false. And you'll see that the answer I get for this line is zero. And then if we just auto fill this down, you'll see that anytime this is a true, we get the same number we have over here. And anytime it's a false, we get a zero. So what's happening here is that every time you start doing math operation using falses and trues, your spreadsheet will automatically take the value of false and convert that to zero and it will take the value of true and convert it to one. 
So then if we take that zero and multiply it by this number, zero multiplied by any number is a zero. So these are all the zeros. And the same number multiplied by a one is always gonna be whatever number you have. This way, we basically end up with this filtered column where anything that matches Olivia will give us the sales amount and anything that's not will just give us a zero. So at that point, if we just sum up all of these numbers over here, that should give us the total for the ones that are matching Olivia in this column. Now, granted, I should have dragged the formulas all the way down, but to logically explain you where I'm going with this, that's what it is. So now let's think about what I did here, right? So what I did, I had this range of cells, and then I had this other range of cells, and I took these two and I multiplied it together like this, row by row, and after the multiplication, I'm summing it up. If you remember, to get to the same total over here, I could use sum product, right? So I could just go here and do sum product. And then at this point, I need my arrays, right? So the first range was this range of sales over here. And the second range that I multiplied was this range of trues and falses over here. So if I close parentheses and hit enter, that should give me the same thing. So now we don't need really to do this or this. We could just get to this total. So now the last step would be to get rid of this column so we can just get the total right away without having to do like this column over here. So what we can do to do that, instead of doing this row by row formula like this, we can create an array formula. So what I mean by that is instead of me doing this one cell equals to Olivia, I can just do, let's check if this entire range from here through here equals to Olivia like this. And right now, if I had entered, this is not going to work because we need to explain this is supposed to be an array formula. And I'm going to do control shift enter or command shift enter to put this in array formula function. And then if I had enter, it should basically just do this entire range drop down in a single formula, which means at this point, I should be able to just copy this. This gives me this trues and falses, go back to this formula and replace this range right here with that formula. And you'll see that I'm getting that. I'm going to delete this. And I still get this total, but now it's not connected to this anymore. So I should be able to just delete this. And you can see this still works. And finally, because some product inherently accepts arrays as arguments, we don't really need to specifically say that this is an array formula because some product inherently handles arrays. So we can just remove this array formula wrapper in here and just keep it at this and hit enter and we get our total. So this gives us the total for, as you can see, Olivia. So another function that can accomplish the same thing is some if or some ifs functions. So if I go here and do something like some ifs or some if, I'm gonna use some ifs in this case, even though it doesn't matter. I'm gonna take the sum range would be the range of numbers, comma. Then I have criteria range, which is gonna be the column of names. And then I'm gonna check after the comma, the criteria, if that's Olivia just like that. And doing this should accomplish the same thing. See conditional summing, I get the same total. This is Olivia and this is also Olivia. So if you look at these two formulas, it's very, very similar in the way it's written. So we have this sum ifs formula, we have the sum range, we have criteria range, and then we have this comma and then Olivia. And in this case, instead of that comma, we have the logical statements equal sign. So that brings me, why would you want to do this instead of doing this? So the reason for that is that this conditional summing functions, the regular ones, like some ifs, they only accept a range as this first argument. See, some range. 
If you try to do an array as the sum range, this function will fail. So to just show you that, if I just convert this to an array by doing array brackets for that sum range, see, this fails. It says argument must be a range. So that doesn't work. Now criteria range, if I'm not mistaken, can be an array. So if I do an array for this, let's see if it fails again or if it still works. So as you can see, criteria range works as an array, but sum range doesn't. It will only accept a range for that summing. For that reason, if we try to do some sort of summary of this spreadsheet from a whole different spreadsheet, we're not gonna be able to do that using this sum ifs functions. So let's do an example of that. If I go to this sum product, this is a whole different spreadsheet and I'm trying to get the total from this spreadsheet over here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this spreadsheet URL, go to this other spreadsheet and start with import range because that's the way we get data from other spreadsheets. So here we're gonna do spreadsheet URL in quotes. And this could also be spreadsheet ID. So just not to have this huge formula, I'm gonna remove this first part in here and just keep the ID. But if you don't wanna do this, you don't have to, you can just keep the whole link in there. I'm gonna just make this shorter by removing this. So that's my spreadsheet ID or spreadsheet URL, comma. And then we have this range string. So basically we have to provide where the data is coming from as text. And the way we do that in quotes, we're gonna go to this other tab. So if you look, the data is located on the sales data worksheet. So I'm gonna go to my formula and do sales data, just like that, exclamation sign after the name of the worksheet, which is this. And then we can go to the data itself. So for now, let's just get the data in this G column. So I'm gonna go from G2 and all the way down. So I'm gonna say G2 colon G, just like this. So just to go all the way, I'm not gonna do an end reference for this G, and that should do an import range. So right now, if I'd enter. So the first time you do this import range, you need to do this like this and click and allow access. So that way we basically prove that we have permission to get the data from that other spreadsheet. So now this just gives me this column of sales. To do my conditional summing, I also need this column of salespeople, sales reps, which is column C. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go here, grab this function, copy it, hit escape, paste it right next to it, and instead of doing column G, I'm just gonna do column C. And you should be able to see we got everybody's names. Here we have C, here we have G. That gets us the data we need. So now if you were using regular sum ifs after you do the import range, you would do equals sum ifs and your sum range is gonna be basically what you have in this column, comma, and your criteria range is gonna be what you have in this column, comma, and whoever you want. So let's say we're gonna do Olivia again for now. So we get the number for Olivia, and as you can see, the number is much higher than this because this time I actually did it for the whole column instead of for this small range that goes until here in this case. So I'm just gonna get rid of all of this. And let's just do this same total using some product right next to it. So I'm just gonna go here and do some product. And again, the first is gonna be my array of numbers here, comma. Then the second is gonna be my array of names where I'm gonna do the logical test if it equals to Olivia. Close parentheses, hit enter, and I should get the same number. So, so far so good. It all works the same way because right now we're still referring to these as a range from the spreadsheet. Now, I don't want these ranges to appear in the spreadsheet though. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go here and try to put this 
function inside of my other function. So I'm going to take this import range, copy it, hit escape, which is this sales amount, go inside of this and replace this A with that import range function, just like that. And if I hit enter, this fails because it says it must be a range. And when you do an import range function, it actually returns an array. And arrays, if you remember, are not supported by some range. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna try the same thing here. I'm gonna go in and replace that same column A with the function and let's see what happens now. So as you can see, we get an error here, but the error is different. It says it has mismatched range sizes. And the reason for that is because I have to replace the second column two to have the same range size. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, hit escape, go back to this one and replace this B column with this second formula. So if I hit enter, you'll see this still works. And just to prove you that this definitely doesn't work, I'm gonna replace this B with that import range two. And you'll see that this still says argument must be a range, so it fails while this one still works. So at this point, I could just get rid of all of this. And this is still gonna work from the data from this other spreadsheet. And that's how we can use some product to create something like some if to get conditional summing. Now, if you wanted to do some ifs, basically you had multiple criteria, you would basically just keep repeating another set of array here. So you would just say, if the next column equals to something else after doing another comma right in here. But I only have one condition, so that's good enough for me. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna delete some of this empty columns here. And instead of having this hard-coded Olivia here, I'm just gonna type Olivia here. And then we can just go in here and refer to that cell on the left. And that should give us the total for Olivia. Then you could just get all the names here. So if you wanted to get the total for Jennifer too, you would just go here and do Jennifer. And then we could drag this formula down to get the total for Jennifer as well. Or we could just get all the names by doing a function. So what we could do, we could just take one of these import ranges. I'm gonna grab this one which is the second one for names of people, copy it. Let's just paste it over here so you can see what it will produce. Let's not forget to put the equal sign in here. Okay, so as you can see, it gives me all of these names, but we'll have the same name repeating many times in this range. Now we need a unique list, so I'm gonna take this and put it inside of unique function, just like this. And we should have a nice unique list of salespeople. And then we could just drag this formula down to have the total for all of them. And you could also just sort this by using sort function around this whole thing. So here we go. We have the total for each sales rep using some product. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.